games for PS3 are being remastered. Everything great about Halo support. Sandbox. All into one multiplayer. Yeah, almost kind of no thought. I think when I bought it, I thought that great. Fasten your seatbelts. What's up, guys? Jalen here. And I'm Jake. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of an upgrade to my late 2011 MacBook Pro. Right now it has a 750 gig traditional hard drive. And we're going to be putting in this uh, Samsung Evo 850 to try to see if we can actually make this four-year-old computer kind of relevant today with respect to boot speeds and how it opens applications. What kind of upgrade do you think this will be, Jake? Do you think it'll be pretty drastic? Oh, yeah, I think it'll be very drastic. I think that this SSD, this is a great SSD drive, by the way, and um, especially for the money. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's going to be at least a four times, you know, mm -hmm. speed improvement. I should also mention that I'm going to be leaving in my traditional hard drive and... I'll be doing that by taking out the optical drive and I'll be using this caddy to actually um, have two drives in the MacBook. That's a good way to, you know, keep all of your storage that you want while also upgrading, you know, the performance of your machine. Yeah, that's especially uh, handy if you buy like a, maybe a SSD drive with less storage on it, maybe mm -hmm. like a 128 gig. Yep, because mm -hmm. SSDs are a little pricey, so, yeah. you know, if you got something with less storage, you could just store your apps there with all mm -hmm. your and uh, media apps. and stuff. Yep. We'll also be including all, like, the links for all these products mm -hmm. in the description. Before we begin, let's run through the specs of my late 2011 MacBook Pro just to give some context. It has a 2.8 gigahertz Intel dual core i7, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and a 750 gig traditional hard drive. In this video, I will give you a brief rundown of how to swap your optical drive with a caddy to allow the insertion of another drive. In my case, I will be moving the traditional hard drive in the caddy and placing a Samsung Evo 850 SSD in the primary slot. All of this is done to see if this type of upgrade can revamp the speed of a 4 year old MacBook Pro and make it relevant today. In this video, I will provide a brief rundown of this process. If you would like a more in-depth and step-by-step -step look at this process, I will link a comprehensive guide with high-res photos in the description below. And just to give a basis for this upgrade, I will be performing a boot test into OS X 10.11 El Capitan. <laughs> and at long last, it looks like it's finally booted at 1 minute 36 seconds. And now let's see how the traditional hard drive fares in opening applications. Jeez, finally. Looks like words finally done. And Chrome does tend to be a bit of a resource hog, so we'll give that one a try. And just to be quantitative about the speed of this particular hard drive, let's go ahead and do some read and write tests so that we can compare this to the SSD once we get it put in. Okay guys, and now it's time to actually upgrade my machine. Again, I would recommend that you use the guide that I have linked in the description below if you're doing this process yourself as it contains many high res photos and goes very in depth with how to do it. I would use that in tandem with this video so that you can actually watch someone perform many of these tasks. As shown, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to remove all 10 of the screws under the MacBook Pro in order to expose the inside of the machine. Next, I would recommend disconnecting the battery connector merely as a safety precaution to prevent electrical shock while you work on the machine. Next, go ahead and disconnect the airport slash Bluetooth ribbon as shown here using a spudger. Also, go ahead and disconnect the optical bay connector as well as the hard drive connector. And finally, go ahead and disconnect the camera cable by pulling it parallel to the logic board. Next, use the tip of your spudger to go ahead and pry loose the antenna connector. Finally, you will need to use a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew the screws located here, 
here, here, here, and here. I would now recommend that you move the airport Bluetooth and subwoofer assembly away from the optical drive just so that you can make sure that it will actually clear it when you decide to lift the optical drive out. And before you lift the optical bay out, go ahead and disconnect the right speaker slash subwoofer connector. You will also want to unscrew the three screws located here, here, and here. Next go ahead and unscrew the two screws located here and here. As I mentioned earlier, I will be placing my traditional hard drive shown here into the optical bay caddy, but if you would like to only add an additional drive to your caddy, you may omit the step of removing the drive in the primary slot. Next you will want to remove the four 6.0 mm T6 Torx hard drive retaining posts from the sides of the hard drive and place them on the new drive that you would like to replace it. And finally go ahead and reconnect the SATA and place it in place and put the mount back on screwing back in the screws. And finally you will want to pull away the SATA connector from your optical drive and place it onto the optical bay caddy. And now all that's left is to reconnect all connectors and reinsert any loose screws. And now for the moment of truth, it's time to see just how drastic this upgrade will be. I should also mention that I use an application known as SuperDuper to clone the contents of my hard drive over to my SSD. I will provide a link to download this application in the description below. <laughs> and there you have it, it's booted up in 30 seconds. For those of you keeping score at home, that's compared to 1 minute 36 seconds on the hard drive. And now let's see how the Samsung Evo fares in the opening of applications. We will then compare these times to the time it took the traditional hard drive to open the same application. And I think it's already apparent that the Samsung Evo SSD is just blowing the doors off my traditional hard drive. I'm very curious to see how these times stack up. Now as we did for the traditional hard drive, let's do a read-write test so we can have a quantitative comparison. There you have it folks, the times speak for themselves. Replacing my traditional hard drive with an SSD in my 4 year old MacBook Pro has resulted in my applications opening 2 to 5 times faster. In the process I still have my traditional hard drive to store media on courtesy of the Optical Bay Caddy with the SSD storing applications and my OS. In summation, if you have an aging MacBook Pro such as mine, or any Mac or Windows machine and are looking to spike its performance, a SSD may be just what the doctor ordered. It can keep you from buying a new machine by keeping your current one relevant, all the while retaining your storage capacity, courtesy of placing a hard drive in an optical bay caddy in the place of your machine's optical drive. This upgrade literally brought my machine into the future by increasing speeds up to five times and will keep my MacBook on par for years to come, when it otherwise wouldn't have been. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if it helped you in any way, we would appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe for more videos like this one.